Some time ago, we made a video about proper sanding techniques with all sorts of tips for getting your project ready for finish. I'll link to that video below. If you haven't already watched it, I highly recommend it. Today, I want to go a little deeper into the sanding process after your first coat is applied. Because proper sanding technique between coats and a final buffing after the final coat are critical to a good finish, which suits the project that you've invested all that time and money into. Again, this video isn't about sanding wood, it's about sanding finish. Now, why would you want to sand the finish you just put on? Well, rub your hand over the first coat and see. That wood that may have been silky smooth when it was bare is now rough to the touch again. There are four primary reasons why the wood may feel rough after finish is applied. It might be raised grain, dust nibs, shrinking, or dissolving. Each of these can factor in more or less depending on the stage of the finishing process, so we'll cover them as they come up. The first factor will appear immediately after the first coat dries. The wood fibers have become swollen as they soaked up that first coat of finish, and what was once a smooth surface is already pretty rough to the touch. In our previous video, we discussed a process for pre-raising the grain before you apply your first coat to lessen the swelling effect. But it still may have occurred to some extent, especially if you applied a water-based finish. So now you'll have to sand those fibers back down. I sometimes use 320 grit to sand this initial coat of finish. I do it by hand and I do not apply much pressure. You don't want to sand the entire coat off. But depending on how swollen the grain was, you may end up turning a little more of this first coat into dust than you will the subsequent coats. By the way, if your sandpaper is gumming up, you need to give your finish more time to dry. You should get fine dust on the surface, not little boogers of partially dry finish. I always like to sand with two hands, one moving the paper across the surface and the other feeling for imperfections that must be sanded away. Again, use very light pressure, but be thorough. This first coat will become the basis for all the rest, so you want it to be perfectly smooth. When you're finished, clean off all the dust. Sometimes I just vacuum it away. I don't blow it off with compressed air because all that'll get into the air over the bench and then it'll settle back down later. A final wipe down with a coat of mineral spirits and a cloth will ensure that you get everything nice and clean. After the first coat, you may begin to notice a second issue. Dust has now settled down onto your coat of finish and it's hardened there. Those little dust nibs were there after the first coat as well, but the raised grain was a more obvious issue at that time. Dust nibs can't be avoided. I have a separate, theoretically dust-free finishing room in my shop, and I still get dust nibs. You just have to deal with them by sanding them away. But I don't want to keep sanding off all the finish that I'm putting on, so I'm going to switch to 600 grit paper after the first coat. This is just enough to handle the dust nibs and any minor imperfections. The process is the same, very light pressure while feeling the surface to find areas that you may have missed. Usually by the third coat, I'm putting on my finish pretty lightly because the thinner the coats, the quicker they dry, and the quicker they dry, the less time there is for dust nibs to form. But with fewer dust nibs, you may begin to notice another more subtle factor that can cause surface imperfections. All finish shrinks as it dries. Some shrink more than others, but they all do it. As the finish shrinks, it can pucker on the surface of the wood. You probably can't see it, but you can feel it. The solution is the same. Very light sanding with 600 grit. Now there's at least one factor that you probably have never considered. Many finishes, especially those that are oil or alcohol based, may be re-dissolved by their base solvent. A can of polyurethane, for example, contains polyresins and mineral spirit solvent. As it dries, the mineral spirit evaporates away, but the new coat of finish contains more mineral spirits, and when you put that on, it can partially dissolve and swell the previous coat. With some finishes, such as water-based poly, this isn't a factor. With others, it's unavoidable. Shellac, for example, will always re-dissolve because it never cures. Oil-based polyurethane, on the other hand, does go through a chemical curing process that will eventually permanently harden it. But this process can take a long time, depending on the type of finish. 
Poly takes about a month to fully cure, and as it does, it becomes more and more resistant to solvents. So what does this mean for your project? It means the longer you can wait between coats, the smoother your next coat may be. Again, this is just one of four factors to consider. You can wait a month between coats and you're still going to have to sand away the dust nibs or other issues that we discussed. But when you get to your final thinnest coats, it may pay to give it a little more time to dry and at least partially cure before recoating. I like to wait at least 24 hours, sometimes a few days before applying that final coat. The final coat is usually the thinnest and as such, you can't use 600 grit to sand away the last imperfections or you're gonna sand off the final coat. So I use at least 1000 to 1500 grit to buff that final coat. In fact, I often use a brown paper bag, which is cheaper than high grit sandpaper. And if you've minimized the four causes of rough finishes that we've discussed, that paper should make your finish smooth as glass. Try it on your next project. See you next time. BitsBits.com is a small company that takes top quality white side router bits and adds their high-tech Astra coating to reduce friction, heat, and wear, perhaps doubling the life of the bit. They have a growing selection of bits for all woodworking applications, and they are the place for CNC router bits. They are really worth checking out, so give them a look at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe, and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.